Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for the opportunity to present today on behalf of my co-authors and the International Breast Cancer Study Group. This is the first data in HER2 positive breast cancer of checkpoint inhibition in combination with trastuzumab in trastuzumab resistant patients. Panacea study was coordinated by the International Breast Cancer Group with financial support from Merck. So as background and rationale from this study, HER2 positive breast cancers have been observed to contain high levels of T cell infiltration. TILs are associated with improved prognosis and response to trastuzumab and chemotherapy, suggesting that modulating immunity may further improve survival outcomes. Trastuzumab itself has been shown to have immune-mediated mechanisms of action, and preclinical studies have suggested that immune-mediated mechanisms of trastuzumab resistance can be overcome with combinations of check with checkpoint inhibition. So this is the design of the Panacea study. It was a single arm study with two cohorts, PDL1 positive and PDL1 negative. Patients were required to have centrally confirmed HER2, excellent performance status, a tumor biopsy less than one year prior to study entry, measurable disease by resist. There was no limit on prior systemic therapy, but patients must have had documented progression on prior trastuzumab or TDM1. The phase 1b evaluated two doses of pembrolizumab with trastuzumab standard dosing Q3 weekly, and, but the phase 2 component evaluated pembrolizumab at standard 200 milligrams Q3 weekly with trastuzumab. Patients were followed and treated until progression, toxicity, withdrawal, investigated discretion or for a maximum of two years. These were the objectives of the study to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the drug combination in patients with pd one expressing HER2 positive trastuzumab resistant advanced breast cancer. The secondary endpoint was to evaluate the safety and efficacy of the drug combination in patients with pd one negative HER2 positive trastuzumab resistant advanced breast cancer. And our main exploratory objective was to explore the efficacy associations um, with baseline TIL levels. These are the study assessments. All patients underwent central screening of HER2, estrogen receptor status, as well as percentage stromal TIL infiltration on HE slides using our predefined and published method. PDL1 status was assessed centrally by Merck Laboratories. The positive cutoff for PDL1 was predefined. These are the statistical considerations. In the PDL1 positive cohort, the phase 1B was conducted using a standard 3 plus 3 dose escalation. In the phase two component, the primary endpoint was objective response by resist. We used a Simon two-stage design with 85% power to reject the null hypothesis. For this, six or more objective responses were required to be observed. Secondary endpoints were other efficacy with the standard other secondary efficacy measures. And the PDL1 negative cohort was a single stage design simply to investigate if there was a signal worth investigating in this cohort. This is the enrollment and disposition. At time of reporting, there's a median follow-up of 30.6 months. 146 patients were screened from 11 sites in five countries. Of these, 68 or 53.5 percent were PDL1 positive. We enrolled 58 into the PDL1 positive cohort, and 12 into the PDL1 negative cohort. At time of reporting, three patients remain on treatment, and the majority discontinued due to progressive disease. So these are the baseline characteristics of the two PDL1 positive and negative cohorts. I'll just highlight that in the PDL1 positive cohort, these patients were numerically younger and there was a higher frequency of ER negative disease. All patients received prior trastuzumab. Majority of patients received at least one other anti-HER2 therapy, most of this being TDM1 and around one third also received pertuzumab. 100% received prior anthracycline and taxane, and the median time from diagnosis of metastatic disease to study enrolment was 40 months. So these are the most common adverse events reported on this study. The most common was fatigue of low grade, as expected. There were no cardiac events reported, and there were no DLTs in the phase 1b. With regards to the immune-related AEs, 11 patients or 19% experienced an immune-related AE of any grade, Six patients, this was grade three or higher, and four discontinued due to an immune-related AE. The most common immune-related AEs were thyroid dysfunction and pneumonitis. These frequencies are consistent with what has been reported in other solid tumor types with pembrolizumab. 
So these are the primary efficacy results. Panacea met its primary endpoint with the required number of pre-specified responses. In the pdl one positive cohort, the overall objective response rate was 15.2%. Disease control, which includes stable disease of six months or more, was 24%. In the pd one negative cohort, there were no objective responses observed. This waterfall plot depicts the maximum change from baseline in target lesions of the pd one positive cohort. I'd just like to highlight there's one patient here who experienced a PR in her target lesions but is not included in the responding population. This is because she had brain mets diagnosed at her first restaging. However, she went on to receive radiotherapy and remained on study treatment with no further progression in her CNS or target lesions for 18 months. This swimmer plot depicts the disease control in the pd one positive cohort. As you can see up the top, for those patients that experienced an objective response or stable disease, these patients experienced durable disease control with the median duration of 11.1 months. Five patients continue at time of reporting with no progression. Of these, three of them have completed two years of pembrolizumab. These are the PFS and overall survival Kaplan-Mai estimates with the pdl one positive cohort shown in red. As you can see, there's a tantalizing suggestion of a tail on the curve, more impressive in the overall survival kaplan mai estimate for the pd one positive cohort. Obviously, this requires further follow-up and the numbers are small. With regards to our main exploratory endpoint and stromal till evaluation, we observed that the median level of till infiltration in the metastatic lesion was 1%. This is 20 times less than what we observe in primary HER2 positive breast cancers. However, we did notice a significantly higher till level in the pdl one positive cohort, and also a significantly higher till level in patients who achieved an objective response, as shown here, as well as also those that achieved disease control. So higher till levels are associated with increased chance of response. We then went on to try and identify a till cutoff that could enrich the population for responders. This has been done in other solid tumor types, and we found that till level as little as 5% could indeed predict for a high response rate. These are the purple bars there for patients who had a till level greater than 5%. This is 41% of the pd one positive population, and the objective response rate for this group is 39%, and for those that achieve disease control, 47%, so this includes stable disease for greater than six months. A level of 5% provides high sensitivity, high negative predictive value, and potentially high reproducibility amongst pathologists. So in conclusion, the panacea study of pembrolizumab with trastuzumab in trastuzumab resisted HER2 positive breast cancer met its primary endpoint in the pd one positive cohort. There were no responses observed in the pd one negative cohort. Stromal till levels in the metastatic lesion was associated with responders and a till level greater than 5% could enrich this cohort for a higher response rate. And for responders, this combination offers durable control without chemotherapy. So I'll just say that metastatic HER2 positive breast cancer in this setting is poorly immunogenic, as evidenced by the majority of patients having low TILs in their metastatic lesions. Saying that, however, we did observe a high response rate in this study as compared to the equivalent triple negative breast cancer study studied in, co in Keno 86. Future directions in immune oncology and metastatic HER2 positive disease should focus on combinations with effective anti-HER2 therapy, particularly in low-till patients. And I'd like to thank finally the patients and their families, the site PIs and staff in the 11 participating sites, Breast International Group, as well as Merck for their study support. Thank you.